Chapter 6 It was the frog's fault, really, that Sundew had discovered the sapwings when she was only two years old. Not the jade frog. This was an actual frog, small and brownish-green with orange flecks across its knobbly back. A frog that hopped into Sundew's bowl of taro, snarfed up the sugar-sprinkled grasshopper she'd been saving for dessert, stuck out its tongue at her, and then jaunted off into the jungle as if it aggravated dragons every day with no consequences. Well, that was not going to stand. No, sir. This time, there would most definitely be consequences, frog. She chased the frog to the thorn vine fence, Belladonna's original version of the barrier, where it popped through a gap in the leaves and vanished into the jungle. Now, dragonettes under four years old were not technically allowed outside the safety perimeter of the village on their own. But Sundu is not like the other leafwing dragonettes. And really, she was almost three, which was practically four. And plus also, what was she supposed to do? Just let the frog taunt her like that? Besides, she knew the jungle better than any of the other dragonettes. She was a Venus dragon trap slayer. She had battled cobra lilies and sundews and pitcher plants and beaten them all. She had mighty superpowers. No one could stop Sundu, chosen one, daughter of the leaders of the Leafwings, especially not on a quest for vengeance. This frog was going down. Sundu glanced around to make sure no one was watching. Most of the adult dragons were in a council meeting, so it seemed fairly safe, and then hurtled over the fence. The jungle on the other side of the thorns looked a lot like the jungle on her own side, except maybe the plants were bigger and grew more thickly entwined. She spotted the miscreant frog right away. It was squatting in a patch of wet leaf mulch, chewing in a very self-satisfied way. Chewing her grasshopper. Aha! Sundu roared, pouncing on it. Her claws squished into the disintegrating leaves and mud, but somehow missed the frog, which leaped several feet into the air and bounded off through the undergrowth. No! Sundu shouted. You will pay for this! She shot after the frog, ducking under snapping plant teeth and weaving through thickets of strangler vines that tried to tighten and ensnare her. She was moving too fast for them, but not fast enough to catch the frog, who could bounce right over quicksand that she had to go around. At one point, she lost the frog and had to freeze for a moment, and then it made the mistake of leaping away again, and she was after it at once. Sundu was surprised when they broke through into a clearing and she realized the sky was turning purple. She didn't think she'd been chasing the frog for that long, but she hadn't been paying attention to anything except the flicker of its legs up ahead. One of the moons was already climbing the sky. Belladonna and Hemlock were going to be furious. Not as furious as I am, she thought, with this frog who caused all this trouble in the first place and must feel my wrath. She slowed down as she slipped out of the trees, realizing there was a pond in the clearing, fed on the far side by a small silvery stream. A boulder as smooth as obsidian stuck up out of the water near the middle of the pond, and some of the far trees leaned down toward it like parent dragons feeding their little ones. Not particularly like Sundu's parents, that is, but like a few other parents she had seen among the tribe. The frog had paused by the edge of the pond, half buried in the mud. Sundu could see its eyes rolling back toward her and its throat pulsing rapidly. She crept forward on stealthy talons, placing each claw silently, crouching close to the ground and holding her wings perfectly still. Here I come, frog. Prepare to die. One step. Another. Closer. And pounce! Her claws closed on mud and thin air. The frog disappeared into the pond with a smug plop. Ugh! Sundu roared, shaking the leaves on the trees overhead and making several dragon traps snap shut on nothing. You slippery, flea-brained, smirking, bug-eyed son of a hivewing, I am going to destroy you! Even in her rage, she knew better than to leap into an unfamiliar body of water without checking for water wheels and bladder warts first. She whipped around, wrenched a large branch out of the nearest tree, and started furiously stabbing the water with it. Droplets flew up and drenched her face and wings, and the underbrush rippled with tiny animals scurrying away from the enormous splashes she was making. She checked the sharp end of the branch. No impaled frog. No tangles of deadly underwater plants either, but that didn't mean there weren't any. If she went into the water and got drowned by a hungry water wheel instead of fulfilling her great stupid destiny, her parents would strongly disapprove. But the frog. It couldn't get away with this. Come out and face me like a reptile! Sundu shouted. I'm going to bite off your legs and feed them to a tarantula. I'm going to pour piranhas into this pond and tell them all to eat you slowly. By all the trees? 
said a voice above her. Who are you talking to? Sundu jumped back, startled. A pale green dragon sat on the boulder, blinking down at her. She had definitely not been there a moment earlier. Also, she was a dragonette, out beyond the safety perimeter, just like Sundu. Also, Sundu had never seen her before, which didn't seem possible in a group as small as the Leaf Wings. Also, she had the deepest brown eyes Sundu had ever seen. My arch nemesis, Sundu growled in response to her question. He was hiding in this pond, but not for long because I am going to destroy him, or her, or whatever it is. The new dragon tilted her head to study the water. Wow, what did this terrible, extremely doomed fiend do to you? It stole my grasshopper, which I was... You know what, it doesn't... Sundu said, noticing the amusement that was sneaking into the stranger's face. What it did is not the point. What I am going to do to it is completely justified. Trust me. I just have to catch it first. Are we... We're not talking about a dragon, are we? The stranger asked. No. Sundu admitted. The other dragon wrinkled her snout thoughtfully. A crocodile? A monitor lizard? Ooh, a gila monster. Those things are cranky. And I didn't got in a fight with one last two months night because they stepped on its tail, but I almost didn't mean to. Hey, maybe it's the same one. It's not- Sundu snapped. She scowled at the water. It's a frog, she said at last. But a very bad frog who deserves stamping on. Oh, no. That's- <laughs> Oh, dear. The stranger covered her face as though she was overcome with sympathy, but Sundu could see her shoulders shaking. Don't laugh at me! She yelped. You would understand if you'd seen a stupid smug face. I can't stand smug faces. I just want to smush them all flat. You should have been here five heartbeats sooner. Then you could have seen it smirkity smirking its way into the pond. Sundu glanced around at the dimming sunlight. Where did you come from, anyway? The stranger waved one of her wings at the trees behind her. From the village, of course, silly. But the village wasn't behind her. It was quite a long way in the opposite direction. Um, what? Sundu asked, which wasn't exactly the incisive line of questioning she'd been planning on. Who are you? The other dragon asked. I feel like she really know you already. Sundu drew herself up and made her fiercest face. It was one thing for Sundu to not know this stranger, but it was inconceivable for this stranger to not know her. Yes, you should. I'm Sundu. Who are you? The dragon tilted her head. Her scales were dappled with darker green leaf shapes, like the shadows of long oval leaves. Her eyes looked like they were smiling. Her whole face was doing a weird crinkly sparkly thing that made Sundu's face want to do the same thing. Crinkling and sparkling? What kind of weird brain magic was this? Sundu? Really? That's an unusual name. She said. Uh, no, it's not, Sundu snapped. I mean, it is technically, because I'm the only one who has it, but everyone's heard it, so it's very well known, which means it can't be unusual by that definition. I mean, is my point... Besides, your name is the weird one. It's just so weird. The brain magic was doing something to her words, too. She frowned as severely as she could. Stop crinkling, face. I haven't told you my name yet, said the other dragon, sparkling even more. Well, I bet it's weirder than Sundu. Sundu fluffed out her wings. I'm Willow, said the dappled green dragon with the perfect face. There! See, I was right, Sundu said. Like, whoever knew anyone named Willow? <laughs> Not me. Willow tilted her head, looking confused. What do you mean by well-known? I've never heard of you. Should I have? Sundu flicked her tail and accidentally knocked a startled lizard into the pond. I'm the daughter of Belladonna and Hemlock, she said. You know, like, the whole plan? I'm the one who has to save Pantala. Save Pantala from what? Willow asked. Sundu's jaw dropped. From the hive wings? She cried. Don't you know anything? Where have you been? Who are you? Oh. Willow's front talons flew to her face. She stared at Sundu as though a lightning bolt had dropped out of the sky and asked for directions. I know why your name is weird. You're a poison wing. A what? Sundu barked, but Willow had already flown off the boulder to land beside her. She circled Sundu, studying her wings and tail with wide eyes. Up close, she carried a scent of mint and chocolate and new rain. But how can you be? You look just like us, Willow said. Maybe a little prettier. She met Sundu's eyes and ducked her head, doing that full-face smile crinkle thing and trying to hide it at the same time. Maybe a lot. Which was a weird and wrong observation. Because Willow was the one with the river-deep eyes and the sparkle face, and that wasn't the point, Sundu. I'm not a poison anything, Sundu said. I'm a leaf wing. But you're one of the Oshots, aren't you? Willow asked. 
She stopped circling and sat down, checking the ground below her for anything thorny first. The scary dragons with all the dangerous plan names. Sundu stared at her. Offshoots? She echoed. I thought we were the only ones, the only leaf wings left. Willow's sparkly look dimmed a little, as though someone had thrown cobwebs over her starlight. Oh, no. She said. There's us, the rest of us, the, um, sorry, I'm not sure what else to say this, the real leaf wings? The ones who stayed with Queen Sequoia and are still loyal to her? Queen Sequoia is still alive? Sundu said, startled. Wow. Willow said. Her wide-eyed look was sort of unreasonably adorable. I can't believe they keep us a secret from you. We learned all about the poison wings in school. What do you learn? Sundu asked, curiosity warring with anger. Did Mother know about this? If so, how dare she hide anything from Sundu? What do they tell you about us? Oh, you know... Also, dragons wanted to keep fighting the tree war, so they split off from the rest of the tribe when we reached the poison jungle. And then they started naming their dragon as the deadly plants instead of giving them tree names, like leaf wings always have. And after being plotting revenge on the highest wings all these years. Queen Sequoia met Winter later in last moon cycle. She's always trying to convince her that it's safer to stay here and lie low until Queen Wallace dies. Met with their leader? There was only one dragon that could be. Belladonna, Sundu's mother. Sundu wondered which hunting expedition or council meeting had been the lie Belladonna had tossed her way to hide her secret meeting with the Leafwing Queen. The queen who was still alive, even though Sundu and the other dragonettes had been taught that she died during the tree wars. Willow was still talking. I mean, can you imagine how dumb it would be to go poke one in the eyes? As long as they think we're extinct, we're safe. But if we let them know we're still here... She shuddered. Excuse me? Sundu said, bristling. So your suggestion is we let them win. We let them steal our continent and revel in our extermination. We just accept living here? She waved her wings at the Venus dragon traps overhead, which had been slowly leaning down toward them, closer and closer as the conversation went on. Sundu dug a rock out of the mud and threw it at the nearest plant. It snapped shut and drew back, and the others around it bristled. It's not a bed here, Willow said. Right? I mean, I think it's better without interesting company. She gave Sundu that crinkle-sparkle smile face that made all the words in Sundu's head run around bumping into one another like disoriented moths. Do not smile back at her, Sundu. She is fundamentally wrong about your entire life purpose. What is your face doing, Sundu? We deserve to be out there, Sundu said, trying to focus on everything she'd been taught. Belladonna had trained her to summon her anger at a moment's notice. That was a safe place to go when Sundu's other emotions got too complicated. Wasp could live for another hundred years, or she could be replaced by someone equally bad. We can't just sit around and wait for history to sort itself out. We have to fight! We have to make things better with our own claws! Willow blinked at the fist Sundu was making, and then she reached out and took it between her own front talons. She smoothed out the tension and laid one palm over Sundu's, her scales warm and light as a fern frond. Sundu could feel Willow's heartbeat, going only about half as fast as Sundu's. Shh, Willow said softly. You don't have to do anything right this second. Just be here. Breathe. No one had ever told Sundu to breathe before. Her first instinct was to scoff that she already was breathing, and she did it rather often and was quite good at it, thanks very much. But there was something in Willow's face, in her eyes as she gazed down at Sundu's talons, that made her impossible to scoff at. They stood like that for a moment. One of Willow's graceful wings was a breath away from brushing Sundu's, like a butterfly hovering just over a leaf. Sundu wondered if the butterfly was as aware of it as the leaf was. She wasn't sure if her heartbeat was slowing down or if Willow's was speeding up, but at some point she realized they had synced. Don't you think tongue is a terrible word? Willow said thoughtfully. I mean, that's what most dragons would say your arts are doing, but it doesn't feel tumpy to me. Pulse doesn't seem right either. Beat sounds too violent. It's not quite like tapping. There should be a better word for this. For two heartbeats finding each other? Sundu said as quietly as she could, trying not to break the spell. Willow gave her a shy sideways smile. I hope so. Sundu didn't know what to say. Belladonna would have told her to push the other leafwing into the pond and yell at her about the tree wars and how important it was to go kill Wasp. She would have pointed out that Sundu had a duty to marry Mandrake and raise super-powered danger babies to destroy their enemies. 
Belladonna would have said there was nothing more important than their vengeance, and that Willow was not worth talking to. But Belladonna was a liar, and Willow was the only dragon who'd ever given Sundew this all-over-inside sparkles feeling. She let her wing brush Willow's lightly. Guess what? I've made a decision. You have? Yes. Sundew cleared her throat and made a portentous face. I have decided to spare the odious frog's life in your honor. That's too bad. I had just decided to camp out by this pond until it emerges so I could murder it for you. What? Sundu couldn't stop herself from laughing, too. Nobody has ever offered to murder a frog for me before. <laughs> well, no one has ever offered not to murder a frog for me before, Willow said. It's very magnanimous of you. That's me, said Sundu. Ever so magnanimous. Can you come live with us? Willow burst out. Come be a leaf wind and meet Queen Sequoia and forget about fighting and see me every day? That was the first time she'd asked, but it wasn't the last. Nearly every time they met, Willow offered again to bring Sundu into the other village, to give her a home and teach her how to be a peace-loving sapwing. But every time, Sundu had to say no. No. I have a purpose. No. My tribe needs me. Your tribe needs me to do this too, even if none of you realize it. No. I have to save the world first. I'm sorry. She'd said that first time. I can't. Willow had looked away, wings sliding slowly down, but Sundu had caught her talons before she could pull away entirely. But can I see you again? She'd asked. Tomorrow night? And the night after that? Maybe also the one after that, and the one after that, and the one after that? I can sneak out, it's easy. Willow had laughed again, and the next night she'd given Sundu the Jade Frog. Our signal. So you know if you're there. Leave it on the rock and I'll come find you. In the ensuing four years, Sundu had convinced her mother that even the youngest dragonettes needed to know about the sapwings, instead of only learning about them when they turned four. But Belladonna never took her to her meetings with Queen Sequoia, nor did she ever tell the council what they talked about. She'd forbidden Sundu to go to their village or try talking to any of them. She seemed to find Sundu's interest in them suspicious, and she hated hearing about them in any case. So Sundu kept Willow a secret. Her secret. This was the longest they'd gone without seeing each other. She'd told Willow it might be a while, but she'd been gone even longer than she expected. And she hadn't told Willow why, or where she was going. A light rain started to fall, misting through the leaves above Sundu. She wasn't sure how much time had passed, only one of the moons was visible through the canopy now. Will she still come? What if she's given up watching for the frog? But at last the shadows around the pond rippled, and one glided up to the boulder and then down to the moonlight in front of her, becoming the silhouette of the only dragon Sundu ever looked forward to seeing. Sundu leaped out of the tree and bounded over the grass into Willow's wings. <laughs>